Hey, what's going on guys? Crow Sama here and you're listening to the Crowcast. And with me is my host once again, Channel 2S. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Second Soundwave here from Channel 2S. We are having a little bit of an issue with our call tonight, so it's going to be a little bit choppy sounding for us. It won't sound too bad for you guys, but just know that there'll be a few times throughout this podcast where maybe one of us doesn't quite exactly hear what the other's saying. So we could, you know, stumble over stumble over each other a bit when we're talking. Um, there might be some awkward pauses. It could go anywhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just kind of networking and being in two different countries and, you know, both different sides of the planet. So, yeah, pretty much. Um, so we didn't have like a super big topic for uh, for tonight's episode. So we're just going to kind of go through. We're going to talk about some Kotobukiya stuff and just sort of see where it goes from there. Yep, definitely. And um, so we definitely want to uh, thank our sponsor for the channel. Is cha- not Channel 2S. It's New Type. And uh, you can go ahead and visit their site and pick up different goods, whether it be paints, it's tools, accessories, diorama buildings. Uh, you can pick up little streets. Uh, you can pick up kits. That's actually probably what you're going to want to build throughout this time that you're more than likely stuck at home, You know, maybe just watching Netflix, catching up on some Evan- Evangelion. Uh, so yeah, you could go ahead and go to new type HQ slash Krosama or new type HQ.com slash channel two S. And just a little, uh, FYI for you guys, even though you only get 10% off when you first order from them, even if you've already ordered from them before, uh, still use our links because that tells new type that you found, you found them through us. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right. So, um, yeah, a couple of things that we can talk about is uh, kits that we're currently building. Um, have, have, are you building anything currently? Well, regarding kits I've built recently, a couple days ago, I did build the high-grade Build Divers Gabaldi Rebake. Now, this was mm. a little bit of a weird kit because I was expecting it to be good when I built it. The Gabaldi was not a very old high-grade at all. In fact, I don't even think it came out a full year before the Gabaldi Rebake did. And it since came the out the same Rebake, year. What? I think it either it either came out the same year or maybe uh, almost a year before the rebate. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, okay. Yeah, this I'm is what I meant, guys. Right here, the uh, we can only hear about half of what the other is saying. <laughs> but anyways, though, since both of these kits pretty much came out in 2018, I figured that surely this wouldn't be that bad of a kit. Um, and going off what I've seen, the Gabaldi itself, the regular Gabaldi, is actually pretty good. However, when it came to the Gabaldi rebake, they made some really weird choices for it. So, uh, first of all, uh, one of the reasons this kit is as expensive as it is, is because even though around 70% of the kit is new tooling, for some reason, they didn't gate off any of the old Gabaldi parts. So you can build the entire Gabaldi minus the shield using the parts in this kit, which would be a bonus, except that it makes the kit like 10 bucks more expensive than it really needed to be. Um, the other big issue I had with it was with the way the arms are designed. So for this kit, for some weird reason, they decided that the elbows that the Gabaldi rebake uses, or rather, for some reason, they decided that the elbows that the Gabaldi beta uses were just a little too good for this kit. So they decided they needed to crap them up a bit by using some single jointed elbows. So the double jointed elbows from the Gabaldi beta are still sitting on the runner. You don't use them for this kit, though. They included a pair of new single-jointed elbows that you're supposed to use instead. Because apparently, making yeah, the elbows I, I of this kit too. look like an IBO frame was more important than giving it actual articulation. Yeah, I think because of that, it suffers with um, trying to hold that, uh, I guess, mace scissor. It actually has a pretty decent time holding it. It's not really a durability thing. The issue comes from the fact that the way the bicep swivel works, it's super weird because it's right on top of the joint. So there's no like cut in the armor for it. It just swivels at the top of the joint. And there's a second swivel at the bottom of the elbow joint. And the problem with uh, moving these around is a lot of times when you're twisting them, because there's not a lot holding the little single jointed elbow bit together, it puts a lot of stress on that thing and it kind of works it apart and you got to be you got to be really careful I think when you're handling it you got to kind of like press down on it as you're twisting it because 
it really puts a lot of strain on that joint and it does not feel like a particularly strong connection. That said though, nothing's broken on mine so far, although I haven't really messed around with it because quite frankly it's not a very fun kit to mess around with. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was definitely I was definitely disappointed with how the elbows turned out on this kit, seeing as I was expecting this to be a pretty decent model. Now, I don't think it's terrible. It's not the worst thing I've ever built, but it definitely was quite shocking considering the quality that I was expecting from this kit. Yeah, it, it's kind of weird. Like I, I know the Gabaldi was, um, I think it was pretty much all around praised as a good kit. But going into this one, it re it really felt weird. Like it just it didn't feel like a great kit, but I think it's an acceptable one. It's it has its faults. It has a lot of missing up uh, paint applications, which which comes with a lot of white stickers. But if you see through all that, it's still I think on the surface a, a really well made kit. Yeah, I think it's an okay model. And just if I those knew they screwed, really bad. I think it's an okay model. And if they if I think it's an okay model, and if I knew they screwed up the elbows that bad, I if I knew that ahead of time, I probably still would have got it, and I probably would have been okay with it. It just wasn't a very nice thing to find out for the first time when you're building the kit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, you building anything else? Aesthetically, though, you're I do really like how else? it looks. Um, no, I'm not really building much of anything else currently. I do still have that Vigna Gina project that I haven't had a lot of time to work on because last week the weather wasn't super great, so I wasn't able to get out and do some painting. Um, but I do want to get some more work on it this week because we have had some really nice sunny days lately, so I wanted to get outside and definitely do some more painting. I do also have a little something else that I picked up recently. So, I went on Amazon and I bought the cheapest airbrush set they sell. It was around $50 for a pump, hose, and an airbrush, and I figured, you know what? I want to see what this thing's like, because I could see it going one of two ways. Either A, it's a total piece of garbage, and I can make a video showing why it's a total piece of garbage and why you should spend the money on a quality airbrush setup, or if it turns out to actually be a pretty decent airbrush, I can show people how it's really not as expensive as they think to get into airbrushing. Mm -hmm. What's the results? So I have messed around with the airbrush a little bit, and I think it is pretty good. However, I haven't had a chance to really play around with it. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get kind of like a spray booth set up. Um, I've, I've got like a fan and some stuff, and I'm kind of working on getting together the parts to build one because for some reason, there really only seems to be one model of spray booth online, and it's like 90 bucks. I don't know why yeah, that is. And it, it's it's okay, because um, I think the one you looked at is probably the one I, I, I actually own, but... You it's definitely the one you own. Yourself one. It's the one everyone owns. You go on Amazon, you go on eBay, you see 150 people selling the exact same fucking product. There is only one tabletop spray booth in existence, apparently, unless I'm just using the wrong search terms and I'm not finding the others. No, there's actually some in Japan. Um, I don't know if you've watched... Uh, who are the... Like, there's a bunch of like the Japanese guys, because um, they don't own this one. A lot of the Japanese and Korean people I watch... They own the one that has like these, um, it's like cardboard almost. Yeah, like, whatever that one is, you can't get that in the U.S. Or I haven't seen it for sale in the U.S. at least. Yeah, that one's like almost, I, I don't know if it's exclusively in Asia, but I've, I've seen it so many places around here like Adeon and uh, Yellow Submarine. But I was like, I already got this booth, so didn't need to pick up that one. If you can find it online, shoot me a link because I'd like to look into that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, um, all I was able to find, though, was that one spray booth that I don't even have to describe because if you search, uh, like, spray booth or portable spray booth or anything on Amazon, it's literally the only product that comes up. I mm -hmm. didn't want to get that. It was really expensive. So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to DIY it with a fan, you know, and, like, a, a bin, like, a big plastic bin and some stuff. So I'm just getting together the parts for that, and I'm going to assemble that and hopefully try it out. So... We'll see how that goes. Hopefully, I don't gas myself. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations on your journey to uh, to airbrushing. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting into it. Um, the Vig Nagina 2 that I'm working on right now is definitely the only kit that I'm going to do with spray cans because it is really crazy how quickly the costs add up when you're working with those. Mm -hmm. Like, you look yeah. at it and you think, oh, it's just going to be a couple little $8 cans to do this build. And then you realize, you know, halfway through... Oh crap, I'm almost out of primer. 
this can of primer is not enough to do a full 1-100 kit. I need to buy another. And then you're like, oh no, well, if this giant can of primer was enough, how am I supposed to use this tiny little can of red for the whole kit? Crap, mm -hmm. now I need to buy way more of these things than I thought I did. And all of a sudden I'm spending, you know, 40, 50 bucks on paint for this one single model. And none of that stuff's going to be usable for any other models in the future. So yeah, if, you know, this $50 airbrush set works out, that is such a better investment that it's not even funny. Yeah, this, there's only like a time and place for um, spray cans, in my op opinion. Like there are certain kits that I, I wouldn't mind just spray painting the uh, the small little parts that like maybe it's like two or three parts. Um, but if it's like a lot of the big armor stuff, yeah, just go go airbrush. Yeah, definitely. It is really crazy how quickly the spray cans add up. Mm hmm. All right. Um, yeah, so for my end, I've actually just completed the uh, Uraven Core 2 Gundam. I think oh, it's just nice. Uraven I want to get one of those. The Core 2. Um, it, it looks good. Uh, I haven't actually put it together. Like I, I have it like Core 2 separate, and then I have the uh, Uraven parts all separate. Uh, just like just I'm gonna the review ship like this, combination and then thing. I'll put it together. Huh? So like you have the armor, it's just like the ship thing? Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. It looks good, though. I love the looks uh, of it, as a, I guess, as a flight unit. Okay, neat. Yeah, I want to, I definitely want to get one of those. In fact, pretty much everything coming out this month is a huge want for me. I really want the Raven, the Wyndham, the Infinite Jest, just the Curios. They all look so good. Um, even the, mm -hmm. the orange armor as well. I think we actually just got a name for it. It was like Saturnix or something like that. That looks pretty cool, too, yeah. although I don't like it quite as much as your Raven. Um, I was talking with MJ actually a few days ago about the Raven, and he said that the shoulder, like the shoulder little incom things on his, were super loose. So I was wondering if you noticed that with your kit yet. Hmm. For the Raven? Yeah, those little bits that flip down on the shoulders. He said they were really loose on his. Okay, I'll have to to test that out and see see if it's loose on mine. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm. Pretty much not going to paint it yet. Uh, no, I'm not going to panel line it or do anything like that because I, I am planning to paint this kit. I just don't know if I want this armor or if I want to get the Saturn armor or whatever that armor is going to be called. Because I, I like, I don't know, man. I like the aesthetics of the orange one way more than your, uh, your Raven. Well, of course you're not going to paint it, Crow. It's already in full glance of colors. Oh, yeah. That's true. It looks, uh, it looks good though. Um, I like the shield, the the wing Gundam shield. Yeah, the shield is pretty cool. Sorry, I'm just laughing a little bit because I'm realizing this entire conversation is basically one of us saying something and the uh, and just kind of guessing how the other person is going to respond and just kind of rolling with it. Yeah, well, just context clues. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I hear, like, two words out of every single thing you're saying, and I think, honestly, considering we have so little to talk about this podcast, it kind of just enhances the experience. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so, yeah, outside of your Raven Gundam, I actually, uh, I have the 1 and 144th, oh, what year is this, uh, 1987 New Gundam model kit. One one forty four. It is a part of my vintage month that I have ongoing this month. It's it's old, <laughs> and that's definitely an understatement. Uh, it comes with screws and seam Hold lines on, Crow, everywhere. Crow. I thought you were building the one one hundred, not the one one forty fourth. I thought I was too, um, but yeah, I looked at, I looked at the box and I was like, oh, it's actually one one forty four. Oh, that's so lame. That's a disappointment. Yeah. The one one hundred is the cool one. The one one forty fourth is dumb. Yeah, I, th I thought I really did have the one in one hundred, but no. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. That's so lame. Yeah, and it, it, the funny thing you is, gotta I build didn't the one hundred now the though. It's a super on the cool front kit. cover art because I don't think it's anywhere on the front cover. I'm like, oh, I'm just assuming it's the one in one hundred because it's a a fairly big box for uh, an old kit. It's bigger than like it does, most but high the one one hundred you day. can always tell it's the one hundred because the box art for it's like super unique looking. Like it has like this full it, painting on the front of the box. I think it, you know what? I think it might actually be called a full mechanics kit or something similar to that on the box. I think they reused that name for IBO. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I mean, and this one doesn't even come with funnels. That's like such a disappointment. Oh, you got the one that doesn't even have the funnels? No. Oh, Crow, you literally have the worst new Gundam kit in existence. There's a version of the 1144 that actually comes with the funnels, and you don't even have that one. Well, that, that one's the uh, the universe, like the actual Universal Century High Grade one, right? No, they made two versions of the 1144th No Grade. One has the funnels, one doesn't. If oh. you have the one that doesn't have the funnels, you have literally the worst new Gundam kit ever made. I can make it look good, though. I yeah, but try. what's the point if there's no funnels? A new Gundam without funnels mm. is like a hentai without boobs. Oh, that's true. Well, sometimes the softcore porn is actually, like, my go-to. Because it's the illusion. Like, you know, the thought process. So this is kind of like my little tease. Okay, the only words I heard were thought process and tease, so I'm just going to wholeheartedly agree with whatever you said. <laughs> okay, I'm not. I'm actually not going to repeat it, because whenever you listen to podcasts, you'll hear what I said. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll definitely have to watch this one back after it goes live. <laughs> um, but yeah, so nothing else really, like, crazy going on uh this month i really just wanted to end because <laughs> so vintage started- month is like it's cool but I-, I shouldn't have made it in correlation with um Mega Man month i really should have kept them separate but i was too eager to build both Mega Man kits and these old kits so it's kind of like me shooting myself in the foot all right crow so i'm gonna send you a link to the dalong page for the one 100 so you can see what you're missing out on Look at this piece of work. I mean, that just straight up looks like a high grade to me. It's, is this the um, the one one hundred? Yes, this is the one one hundred, the old one. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Articulated See, like, funnels. Actually, pretty common over here. Well, good, because it's awesome. Yeah, I guess I'll... I might have to pick this up later on, then. It has, like, metal die-cast parts. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really neat. And actually, I think I saw a diorama someone did it. I, I can't remember if it was GBWC, but it was some big modeling contest where someone submitted a diorama of the box art for this kit that had, like, the Giradogas and everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was really neat. Yeah, this this one does look really good. I wish I wish Hobby Link Japan would have sent me this one instead. But yeah, it is what it is. Well, uh let's see, other than that, that's pretty much it. Um no no other kits going on right now and uh just gotta build this new. So I guess with that, we can go ahead and start moving on to the Shizuoka announcements. The Kurobukiya stuff you sent me, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I have to I'm look just at gonna, I have no idea if Crow's my, talking uh, right now or not, so I'm just going to go ahead and start talking about stuff. So the first thing I see on this page is some kind of bullet knight. Um, it looks like a Buso Shink kind of Buso Shinki Megami device sort of line. I'm not sure if this is part of Megami device or if it's a different line. But we got this cute little demon girl. It's definitely going to be a Megami device. She got a lot of cleavage. It's almost the same exact thing as the launcher. Uh, She's got a cloak. She's got a very sort of kind of berserk style armor and helmet with like some horns and stuff. It's a pretty cute Mm -hmm. design. I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah, I like the third picture, uh, the one where she's like fully cloaked with like the little helmet. I love that. That's going to be my go-to pose. So I don't, I don't know. For me, this this one right here is an instant buy. Yeah, it's pretty cute. I want to get into these, and I see a lot of them that look really cool. But a lot of times, the really cool looking ones are sold out, or I just can't get a hold of them, and it's kind of a bummer. Mm-hmm. Now look at um, you you see the fourth photo where they show like they have like the arrows pointing at the ass. Yeah, like her her yeah, suit the ass like rides is up her way butt better on this kit than, the than it was on the uh, original launcher. 
Yeah, they made it a little bit plumper and it kind of rides up her crack a bit more. Hell yeah. See, I love Kotobukiya. God bless her hearts. Yeah, those are the kind of modifications we need. Mm Mm-hmm. That's just straight culture. Yeah, that's how you make a 2.0. All right, we we can move down and check out the sister to this one. So it's another Bullet Knights. Uh, this one oh, is cool. So be... it's like, so they're doing like they used to do with Buso Shinki, where they release two, like, waves of two, and the two have kind of a theme going. So, like, this one's like a nun and, like, a devil girl. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. It's so neat to see them bringing that back. Yep. I think this one's called Exorcist. Okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. She looks very she lewd. She is my favorite of the two, though. Uh, very I cute design. Yeah, these and, these uh, look great. I, I want to get into this line. Um, these look really neat. Looks you like she has something... Any, um... I have not built any of Kotobukiya's Mecha Girl kits. The only Mecha Girl kit I have is a... I think it's by Aoshima, a Macross kit. And that's it. Mm. And I still haven't built that, even though I've had Trust it for me. Like a year. Trust me. It's it's worth getting into. Like, I mean, I don't have a bunch of them. Like, I, well, I have more unbuilt than what I have built, but the ones I have built are fantastic. Like, I I love them. I love the construction. Only, only the Bullet Knights launcher. That one is still like a pain because a lot of the parts don't stay on at all. Yeah. So speaking of launcher. Is it just me, or are the big, like, hip-flap pieces on the Exorcist reused from that kit? Because that looks like the same shield that the launcher had. Mm. Uh. So, the connection point for, like, the yellow shin armor, that looks the same, but the shin armor itself looks different, but the connection point's probably going to be the same, and that's actually super weak. It's it's really bad. Um, the hip joints, or, like, the hip parts... I don't think those are going to be the same. I think those are going to be completely uh, completely different. Okay. Yeah, I've only seen a couple pictures of Launcher, so I can't really judge that. Mhm. But yeah, I like I love the I love like the alternate faces and stuff they do for them. That's really cute. Um just a great yeah, like, great looking line all around. So yeah, that's what like, we uh, have here. The leg... Oh, sorry. They have like going. the hip gimmick. Yeah, I, I already talked. I actually already pointed that out. Um, oh, it looks okay. like they got some kind of like pull out hip mechanism. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you want to get over to the prototype of the um, the Alice Gear Aegis um, Shin Shin oh, Shun Mi Kanagata. Yeah. So the next one we have here is um, I don't really know what this is. I think Crow just mentioned the name, but I've already forgotten it. Um, it's got a pretty cool design. She's got like this neat kind of very high tech flight pack angel wing looking thing. I think it's a pretty cool design. I don't like it as much as the last two, but I'm definitely interested to see what this looks like when it's done. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah, I think this is not as cool as the previous two, but um, I'm still going to buy it just because it looks really cool. Um, the fact that she has like the little crow feet, I, I really need one. Oh, man, I really wish I can go to like the Winter Festival or something because... Um, a lot of these Japanese fests are, and, and conventions, they have like a separate area, which is going to be, um, you know, like the marketplace. Some of these market um, you know, sellers, uh, they actually sell male versions of Frame Arms Girls, like resin conversions. So you can buy like the like a, like a bust and like the head of like a male. I would love to get that for this kind of character. And I can actually make myself a Kurosama Megami device kit. That would actually be really cool. That would be a really cool project, yeah. Yeah, I, I should have bought it when I had the chance, but I think they were like super expensive. Like, yeah, they were just as much as a full kit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's just resin, but you know, these guys, you know, they're making they're making uh, magic happen. Yeah, and like I'm looking at the next one here, this Frame Arms Girl one. Again, this is another one that looks really nice, and I kind of feel bad about missing out on some of these because the thing with, oh, especially with Kotobukiya's kits is a lot of times, if you didn't pre-order it, you're kind of shit out of luck. And since a lot mm-hmm. of these kits, I didn't really get into them until... Even if I wanted to get into them now, I feel like there's a lot of ones that were really cool that I just kind of missed out on. And without, you know, paying stupid money for them on Mandrake or something, I can't really get a hold of them. Yeah. But this one looks really cool. This is actually Frame Arms Girl, not Megami Device. I know, that's what uh, I... Yeah, I said this is a Frame Arms Girl. 
Oh yeah. But uh it looks good. I like the the bell bottom legs. Um the four swords is really cool. I'd get it if I was collecting them, but I wouldn't start with this one. Yeah. Uh I'm kind of like on the fence. Like it does look really cool. I love the Ronin kind of warrior style. I just I don't know. Like after seeing the first two at the top, I'm like, eh, maybe I'll skip on this one. I'll just get the 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 first two. I do like the color scheme though. I think that's that's a nice shade of red. Uh, I wish I actually wish it was pink, like hot pink. Nah, I like, I like the red. I like that maroon. That's a red. really nice color. Mm hmm. So then we have the schoolgirl ones, and I think these are still being made by Kotobukiya, right? Yeah. Uh, so these, um, it says uh, Madoka Yuki. I don't okay, know if that's so like an actual aren't Kotobukiya. character, or maybe that's the line. Wait, no, it says copyright yeah. Kotobuki at the bottom of the images, so this is the line. Yeah, yeah, all this is Kotobuki. Um, this is just like a separate line from the Frame Arms Girl and all that. These could be really cute. I could see myself picking up a couple of these if I already had a bunch of like Mag Megami devices and Frame Arms Girls, but again, I haven't really been collecting the line. I'm kind of behind on it. There's a few that I like. Um, I don't think I'd be able to track them down, though, so I can't really say I'm too interested in these. Mm-hmm. So it seems like I don't know if this is one character or if it's two characters or this is a single model that comes with several alternate hairstyles and faces because they have a separate gotcha. listing for the next character below it, which is another schoolgirl with a different uniform who has different faces and hairstyles. Mm hmm. Now, I'm, I'm wondering about the skirt. Is that skirt going to be plastic or is that like a cloth or a, a rubber or something? On this particular prototype, it's probably made out of the same material since it looks the same, but on the final kit, I could see them maybe making it out of a more rubberized material. It would definitely not mm -hmm. be cloth, though. Yeah, because I'm definitely curious, and if it is like a set plastic piece, like, if it's, is it going to be multiple plastic pieces together, and are there going to be, like, seams? Because I would hate to have to do seam line removal on this. Yeah. And they're but. doing a furniture set for them that has like a a, a little uh, little cafe table and some chairs. These things mm -hmm. look super fun. Um, I don't know how much they're going to be. They're probably going to be like the same $50, $60 that a lot of the other Kotobukiya stuff tends to be, which is kind of a lot, I think, for a kit like this. But seeing as that's, I guess, about what a Figma costs, I suppose that's not too crazy. Yeah. And they're also uh, doing what, like what a... Are these, like one and eight scales? Um... Are these one eight scale? I think I th I was assuming they were just like Figma size, like one six. Oh, okay. Exactly. So I'm looking at the uh, the next desk frame set. Girls and are like one like eight a, scale. Uh, I guess it's like her desk in her room or something. She's got her little desk clamp, and she's reading. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little. I love these little accessory sets they're doing for them on their own are great as well because you can get these for like your Figmas or whatever and have some nice little furniture pieces for them. So that's really mm -hmm. great to see. Um, then we got this, yeah, I like this super man. robot I'm, guy. I'm definitely picking up like the furniture set and everything. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We got the police robot guy. I think this is Jay Decker. Maybe it's not. I don't really care about super robots, so I couldn't say one way or the other. I guess it looks fine. Yeah, I'm not into brave police Jay Decker. I, I, yeah, I don't know anything okay, about so it. it is Jay Decker. Um, we got the little guy inside. We got the big gun. We got mm -hmm. Dino Wings Man. And then we have Red Mega Man, who I'm sure you're interested in. Yep, um, definitely picking this up because I love color variants of Mega Man. I do like the effect parts for this one, especially that one that like wraps around his arm. That's a really cool piece. Mm hmm. And that shade looks really good, man. It's like a a nice matte like material, or maybe like a, maybe a semi gloss, but it looks more matte. I think that might just be how they top coated the kit for the painted images. If the actual plastic is that finish, though, that would be pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I'm already over that, though, because I just saw what's underneath it, and that looks freaking awesome. Is that from something? Whatever's underneath Mega Man. I don't know what this is, but it looks cool, and I like oh, it. Yeah. Fantasy Star Online 2. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, Never so it's it. like this neat mecha thing. Kind of gives me some Full Metal Panic vibes, maybe a little bit of Armored Core. Definitely a neat design. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is just the most boring looking mecha ever or if this is an unpainted prototype. Um, 
I'm assuming it's unpainted. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Then below yeah, that we have some series. more I, I some more hexagears. We got this Walker thing that's kind of neat, I guess. I haven't really been following the hexagears. I thought they were kind of overpriced for what they were, um, and mm -hmm. a lot of them um, I never really saw come to the U.S., so I didn't really pick them up. No, they're they're in the U.S. Um, I saw a bunch of them at Hobby Town. Okay, cool. Um, I still haven't I still haven't really I would say done it depends because digging into this line though, like they're real they are really small, but they're pretty cool for what you get. They are. If I was not c collecting like seven other lines, I'd probably give them a try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this little dune buggy robot guy looks pretty cool. What I guess Kodobuki has to offer, but it's fine. And then we have some kind of new commander. She's got like some cool glasses and these sort of pointy eared antenna things. Um, and then we have a bunny one, I guess. Kind of looks like a, I don't know. I'm not super into these. Yeah, these are I'm, like especially uh, the previous little... governors. Uh, yeah, the little yeah, governor guys. Like I don't really care versions. that much about. Um, although I guess you kind of do need them to interact with the with the mechs. Yeah. They're, so they're then we have pilots. this thing down here. Um, I don't know what this is, but the lower half of it's a boat. Um, it's kind of cool. Not really much I can the, say about um, it. Frame arms. Yeah, the one that that's like half a boat. Yeah, that's the uh, Izumo. Sure. All I heard was Mo, but I'm just going to agree with that. <laughs> um, so it's basically an upgraded version of the... Uh, I forgot what the previous one was called. Because there's already a frame arms kit that is a boat. Okay. This one just looks a lot better because I, I, I don't know... Are those like little planes? Those are little planes on the flight deck, yeah. They're like little jets on the... They're like little stealth bombers, deck. but they're... It's like they made... No, or it might be... A piece of equipment that's designed to look like a bunch of planes in the flight deck, but it's actually something else because they're like fused and interlocked together. So unless those planes are de designed to like disconnect and separate, that's some other thing on his flight deck. Um, if that's yeah, what it is, though, it's... I think it's pretty cool how they made it look like a bunch of planes. Yeah, as I say, like, I don't know if it's um, made for aesthetic purposes or or not, but it looks pretty damn cool. Yeah. I mean, it's a model kit, so technically it's all made for aesthetic purposes. <laughs> that bit of wisdom right. was probably uh, lost in the we call. Have Tomo 2. Yes, little robot friend for your frame arms, girls. It's fine, it's I guess. Stupid. I feel like it's not quite as cute as like a Haro or something. I'm not really, not really super excited for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like you can customize it pretty well, though. You can, it has like a couple of ports on the sides and top, and throw some stuff on it. I guess I just don't really care for the base design. Mm -hmm. We got a it's, new. It's, uh, apparently, it's a uh, it's a collaboration with uh, Morrow Toys. Okay, I didn't hear that brand name. I'm just gonna go along with it. <laughs> so we got a new MSG we set. Got a it's bunch like of a MSG stack parts. full of these little wheel things i guess they're like little roomba drones that can go around and <laughs> do stuff i don't i don't really understand what this is house. but it's it's kind of neat i guess and we got some more missiles mm. um i'm not as i'm not seeing any of these msg sets that look super exciting to me except maybe this minigun with the the box of ammo next to it that's kind of cool um but i guess they're okay we got a little we got a little armored skirt for the frame arms girls that's pretty cute um I don't mm -hmm. necessarily know if I'd get that, but it's neat, I guess. Yeah, um, and yeah, that too. seems like pretty much the uh, the end of the stuff here. All right. Well, that's uh, that's basically Shizuoka for the Kurobuki side. I don't know if there was really much else uh, announced from like different um, publishers or you know brands. I'm not really much of the Hasegawa kind of fanboy, so. Yeah, I don't know. But Bandai's been announcing things. Wasn't there like a five-day kind of announcement? There is. Bandai's going to be doing a five-day announcement event from the, I think, like the 25th through the 29th. So I guess four days. Oh, okay. Um, and the Gundam stuff's all going to be on the last day. It's like each day is going to be a different theme. I think the first day is Figure Eyes, and then it's like, uh, I think like Star Wars or something. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe even Galleon and then Gundam. Yeah, I know there's definitely a uh, figure eye standard. There was Eva, Gundam, 
I think you like you said Star Wars, and there was like another one that yeah, some yeah. Other crap. However, all the Star all the Gundam stuffs can be coming out on the last day, so if that's what you're there for, probably not much point in checking in before the 29th. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe it's around this time that no, is it usually around this time or September or August that they announce the December big release? Usually in the summer. That's like an August thing. And we already, actually, you know what? We kind of already know it, because it's going to be the PG Unleashed, unless that's coming out before December. Mm, Yeah, I haven't heard much about it. I I didn't even know if it was going to get released this year. At the rate they're teasing it, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes out in December. Mm Hmm. Well, I'm ready to see something. If it's going to be another perfect grade, I'm I'm all about it. Um, I'll definitely get it. But... I don't know. I want something that has not had a proper kit. Something like a Master Grade G Cell Verka or a goddamn Master Grade HFX. Oh man, HFX would be cool. Um, I'd like to see Master Grade HFX and Legionless too. Um, I don't know if it would happen. I think we were talking, I believe, yesterday in the Discord about maybe Strike Freedom and Destiny 2.0 with either a Legend or an Akatsuki as like a kind of Master Grade set. Maybe, maybe not. I could see them putting it off for a year where they have less big announcements so that they can kind of ride the hype of Destiny. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see any more double O Master Grades this year. I think they're sticking to one per year, so Virtue is probably going to be a 2021 release. Um, beyond Master Grade, I would like to see some more real grade. I know that probably a lot of the real grade's design focus has been going to the Ava kits, and that's why we haven't seen anything since the Force Impulse, but I still would like to see them come out with something. Yeah, we're probably not going to see anything come out until maybe November. Yeah, probably. Well, no, because um, I think Ava Unit 2 is coming out November, if I'm not mistaken. It, oh, it is coming out in November. Okay, so that's a ways away. And I think they're doing a zero as well, right? Or was that P Bandai? Uh, I don't know if that was retail or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's basically... Uh, Two more RG. No, it was retail. All three of them were retail, I think. I think they made all three real great Avas retail, and I think the zero is coming out before the two. Okay. So the zero is probably going to be sometime in the summer. Yeah, so we're probably not going to see a Gundam real great until next year, anyways. Oh, I I hope not. I hope they're not, like, doing Ava or Gundam. I hope they're attributing their resources properly so they can do both, because I wouldn't necessarily want to see that. Well, I'm wondering how many of the workers are actually working right now with the way things are going. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that is a good point. I mean, when it comes to, like, designing and stuff, Mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff probably can be done from home unless they need to, like, you know, get something, like, printed out as, like, a test model at the factory. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, did you see that? A couple of, like, people over there just to do some small work. Did you see that Korean video where the guys went to the Gundam factory and did, like, an interview with the people there? No, I'm going to send it to you. Oh, there's this uh, there's this Korean YouTube channel that did a little mini documentary series on the Gundam factory. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I've this- seen one that was on YouTube about people going to the Gundam factory. This was, like, this was like just a couple months ago. Oh, okay. No, not even like one month ago. I'm going to see if I can send you a link to it. So here's part sure one of like the three part series. I got to be just oh, so fantastic going there and just seeing the workers. Be like, hey man, since since you're here, since you're already sitting in that seat, look, I know you got the prototype massive great age effects. Just. Just slip it in my pocket. <laughs> and then he'll be like, none, none this guy. Yeah. So for the people at home, the only thing I heard in the last 20 seconds was non <laughs> God damn it. I hate, I, hate, I hate this fucking internet. I'm sure there was a funny joke that preceded it, though, so I'm going to laugh at it anyways. Ha. 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 <laughs> oh. Yeah, basically in summary, I just want my fucking age FX. Yeah, yeah, that's a mood. <laughs> like, at least I got it in um in Gundam Battle Gunpa Warfare. Like, uh, at least it's something. 
So the best part of this conversation, guys, is that I can hear Crow initiate a topic, so he'll say something like, and the best thing about Gundam Battle Gunpla Warfare, and then he'll just fucking cut out, and then I hear nothing for like 30 seconds. It's the best. <laughs> it's funny because this is basically the same on my end. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're going to have to get this sorted out before the next uh, podcast. So, what else we got to talk about? Uh, any, any other big news topics going on? I mean, not really. There was that show that I was going to talk about, but if the call is going to be like this, I don't really want to talk about it tonight. I'd rather save it for when we've got this sorted out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think before we uh, initiate the conversation, I'll probably just do a, a soft reboot of my, uh, my computer. Maybe I can, like, I don't know, restart it and... I mean, have you have you rebooted it since uh, the first time we tried this? Yeah, I, I I did it two days ago, maybe. Well, okay, yeah, um, we could maybe try that when we're done with this here. Mm-hmm. Um, but as it stands, I mean, we haven't been recording for a super long time. I think it's only been like forty five minutes or so. Um, so this isn't quite enough to be a full episode, but given the given the nature of it, um, I mean, we could kind of end it whenever. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm fine with it right now because we, we covered a decent amount of topics, you know, some things that we're working on, uh, some future stuff, and then also yeah. the uh, Shizuoka yeah, Kotobuki, Kotobuki side. Stuff. But definitely uh, once Bandai announces their, like, little five-day adventure of all the new kits coming out, I think at that point we could definitely get back on this um, podcast and we can just, like, unload all this new news. Oh, yeah, sure. All right, but um, you got any kind of final parting words? Um, not really. Um, stay tuned. I still want to talk about the show that I was going to talk about, and I'm going to talk about it on this podcast eventually um, when we get this uh, tech yeah. stuff sorted out. Um, maybe next episode, maybe the one after, depending on how our schedule works out. Yeah, um, I would definitely say you know, we'll do another one next week, and... Um, I don't actually next week is the 22nd 21st yeah so yeah uh still got a whole another like week before the uh, Bandai announcement so I think at that uh, I think next week you can definitely go on a tangent about your um anime oh yeah I probably could and actually um I've got a got a bit of an idea right now and I'm thinking maybe um never mind this isn't gonna work I just tried it and it failed miserably. <laughs> I was gonna say we could like live type what we're saying and like send it to each other over Discord as we're talking, but there's no way I can type as fast as I talk. Oh yeah, that would, that would be a nightmare. All right, um, I guess the only thing I have to part with, um, just once again, the Metabots theme is going to be starting June first. Uh, I know it's a little bit difficult to uh, obtain the Metabots kits. Uh, selfishly, I will say I'm doing this more so as um, a way to reach out to the higher pr- you know producers or anyone who's an influencer within the Metabots, um, you know, higher tier. If they can see that people want Metabots to come back, I don't know, maybe in some scope of hope and light, we could possibly see a renewal of Metabots. Um, it's not going to happen. So this Crow. isn't as much of a collective community building models together. This is more of a theme to be vocal about this franchise and, and how much we love it. Well, but, I wish you luck. Thank you, good sir. Uh, you know, I'm, I feel like a, a pioneer, you know, trying to, trying to lead the way. But... That's it. That's all. See, I, I was got. thinking uh, you're more like that one, with that one like Japanese soldier on the island that thought it was still World War Two twenty years later. Oh, what movie was that? Kong. No, I think Kong. that was like. Wasn't that like a real life thing? It was. Yeah. Let me see. I'll I'll Google it. Japanese <laughs> soldier island. But instead of uh, World War Two, I still believe it's the early two thousands. Okay, here we go. It's like, it's like Fox Hiro Kids Onoda is still was a Japanese army intelligence officer who fought in World War II. 
who was a Japanese holdout who did not surrender and at the war's end in August 1945. After the war ended, he spent 29 years hiding out in the Philippines until his former commander traveled from Japan to formally relieve him of duty. Yeah, he was a real guy. That's so interesting. I bet, he's like, I bet he was like super disappointed. He's like, damn it, I waste, wasted all this goddamn time. <laughs> <sighs> There's a lot of jokes I can make about this, but I really don't want to. Anyway, so that's probably going <laughs> to do it for the podcast tonight. So I'm Second Soundwave. Um, All right, I'm Crew. Yeah. So subscribe. <laughs> channel's in the descriptions. I'm a YouTuber too. My channel's not this channel, but I do like news and stuff. Um, channel 2S, it's going to be in the description. Um, I guess I'll see you next time. Take care, guys. All right. Godspeed. Oh. <laughs> I just accidentally ended the call on him. <laughs>